This is worth paying attention to. An article on Barron's from Al Root, who's been covering Tesla for years, doing his best to remain fairly neutral, clearly not a fanboy or a hater, maybe somewhere in the middle. Here's the headline. I tested Tesla's new full self-driving software. What I thought after more than 1,000 miles. And the subline, the car drives like a pretty good driver that doesn't know everything. You guys might recall a while ago, I gave the example of Tesla's FSD and the progress. It would start like an extremely drunk, dangerous toddler behind the wheel, eventually to an inept, incompetent learner driver, then eventually to a below average driver, then on par with average, then above average, then way above average, then superhuman, then absolutely fucking incredible. Well, we appear to be approaching the learner driver stage. I just had to take a moment, by the way, to roast the, what, 10, 11, 12 year old stock photo that they're using of an ancient Model S. I mean, holy shit, dude. Now let's read the caption. When evaluating Tesla's driver assistance technology, investors should remember that the technology changes rapidly. The latest updates are impressive. So credit where it's due, this is not only true, but it's worth underscoring. Some people may have a picture in their head, a preconception of Tesla's FSD versus a very different reality because they may have experienced it or seen some videos of a previous version. And they may now assume that it's static. It doesn't get any better. It's locked in time. That's not the case. As Al points out, it is improving rapidly. And he goes on to say, the latest updates are impressive. So into the article. I tested Tesla's latest full self-driving software. It's gotten a lot better. Barron's, via me, has tested Tesla's FSD driver assistance features several times for many months. Miles driven with the software in control now measures in the thousands. So this is huge, although we kind of already knew. But the fact that Al at Barron's is sharing this with his audience. Oh, by the way, you might note, typically when you see an article like I tested, insert company names, insert product, software, etc., you will almost always, if you look in the fine print, discover that it is a sponsored piece that the company gave the product or the software to this person to create an article about how amazing it is. But of course, make sure you remain neutral, but don't forget that we're paying you and going to hook you up with some incentives. So, you know, don't forget who's buttering your bread here, bro. This is not one of those cases. Al is simply doing his best to understand the software and report his experience as opposed to a sponsored placement, a sponsored article. The reason for a primarily stock focused publication, testing cars should be obvious. Developing and improving self-driving cars is a big deal for the industry and for Tesla stock. More credit where it's due, Al actually gets it. It's a fucking gigantic deal, not just for the industry, but certainly for Tesla stock. Which to remind folks, as I recall this, markets closed, the stock is $200 neat, less than half its all-time high closing price approaching three years ago. I'm sure the solving of autonomy will write that wrong. CEO Elon Musk measures the opportunity in the trillions of dollars. It doesn't have to be that big to still be a big deal. Thank you, Captain Obvious. In the first test, circa 2023, by the way, uh, just to make sure everyone understands, I'm recording this in 2024, so last year, not very long ago, I said FSD drove like a mash of a teenager with a learner's permit and an octogenarian, like my dad who prefers caution no matter how everyone else is driving around him. The system was both impressive and frustrating. I was passed illegally several times by other drivers, irritated with my pace. That was version 11.3 of the FSD software. Tesla gave all US Tesla owners a free trial of its FSD software in the spring. That was version 12.3. So from 11.3 to 12.3. Version 12.3 tested better, but not that much better. That version drove like a more confident young driver combined with my dad, still annoyingly cautious in certain common driving situations. Recently, Tesla sent out the upgrade to FSD version 12.5. Musk promised this was a big deal. He wasn't lying. And just wanna remind you folks via my notes taken on Tesla's Q2 2024 earnings call from Elon Musk, who described FSD 12.5 as a step change improvement and explained that there are now five times the parameters in 12.5 versus 12.4 and 12.5 has merged highway and city stacks together. So Elon Musk, very clear here, a step change improvement, five times the parameters, and obviously Tesla finally have emerged highway and city stacks, which this should have been a very urgent destination for Tesla to reach because prior to now, why on earth, if you think about this, would you have a different stack, different software stack for driving in condition A, highway versus condition B, city stacks? That's not a very generalized solution. Obviously, this was the end destination. Now Tesla's finally reached that. This is a big deal. 
So it turns out, once again, for the quadrillionth time, Elon Musk said something that was true to investors. Al continues, I've been testing it for about a week. Holy fuck, dude. Bro's done a thousand miles in a week. Am I high? Did he? Damn, dude's gone over a thousand miles in a week. That is dedication. Now the car drives like a pretty good driver that doesn't know quite everything. Now I'm just going to say this again. Now the car drives like a pretty good driver. The caveat, of course, doesn't know everything. Like a pretty good driver. It's not perfect yet, but talk about some real world AI. Like a pretty good driver. I can't fairly use an octogenarian or learner's permit analogy anymore. The car isn't perfect. Some mistakes get made, but the overall experience with version 12.5 was eye-opening. For the latest tests, I drove many of the same routes as prior tests for comparability. That doesn't make this test scientific. It's still anecdotal at best. That it is, and it's always important to understand when you watch a video or hear somebody's description of their experience with FSD. It is just a single anecdote. That's why it's important to watch a bunch of these things at scale or use the software yourself. You'll absolutely find somebody who's had a terrible experience saying it got worse, it's regressed, see, it did better here on this version, now it was worse. But you'll also find many people saying it's much better. A sampling bias is no joke. And anyone reading this or trying FSD out, please remember that you still need to pay attention 100% of the time. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Gee, yeah, I really wish Tesla had have made that obvious. Oh, wait, they did. Thanks, bro. We, we know. The driver is still responsible, as Tesla's disclosures indicate. My selected routes aren't simple. My town, like many others, has many frustrating traffic patterns, and I wasn't easy on the car, driving into rush hour traffic amid summer road work and lane closures. The car simply drove way better than in 2023 and early 2024, compelling insight into Tesla's rate of progress. Not a little better, way better. It handled stop signs and oddly shaped intersections that used to trip it up. As for mistakes, the car left me too far into a frankly brutal local intersection on an unprotected left turn after a light went from green to yellow. This was annoying, but represented no danger. I had to make a late left turn as I got honked at a lot. So it sounds like the car was being overly cautious when the light went from green to yellow and instead of doing what a human would do, and we all know what that would have been, right? Just fly through on the yellow. Took a very cautious approach and just stopped like a little bitch. Not dangerous, but embarrassing. FSD also appears to struggle with signs banning right turns on red lights, and it didn't know what to do with a rush hour traffic officer instructing me to make a normally illegal turn. I had to take over. Taking over in Tesla parlance is called an intervention. For me, the number of interventions was down with version 12.5, and the number of drives with zero interventions was up. So again, there are people today who have no idea how much progress Tesla has made. Zero intervention drives are becoming the norm. Now just think about that for a moment. The fact that there are any examples of Tesla vehicles driving end to end without a single intervention is proof of concept that robot taxis are just around the corner. Combine that with Tesla's rate of progress and if you have a brain, it's inevitable. You know what's about to happen. FSD works well, but I still had to park the car in a commuting lot and turn it into my driveway. I don't know how difficult it is for Tesla to navigate three point turns and parking lots at very low speeds. Now, just for the record, in terms of autonomy, the actual least important thing for Tesla to nail is parking at your destination for obvious reasons, right? Because if you're dropping people off, the vehicle doesn't need to park. It just needs to stop so they can get the fuck out, right? Tesla obviously prioritizing this, the bottom of the pile, as it should be. Along with mistakes, there were surprising successes. The car left a space for a person turning left out of a retail establishment while I waited several cars back in rush hour traffic at a red light. FSD was unexpectedly polite. Guess that's what happens when you train the software on good, polite human drivers. I got away from the appreciative driver. <laughs> the car deserves the credit. What a moment. The reaction of passengers in the car is telling. Some don't like it, essentially demanding I maintain full control. FSD makes them nervous for no other reason than it makes them nervous. This would be the extremely anxious warrior type people. I know many of you are listening in the audience. Others are blown away, impressed by what the car can do. Those views mirror investors' thinking. Some believe that Musk chronically overpromises and that truly self-driving cars are years, if not decades, away. Some see version 12.5 and believe wholeheartedly that robotaxis are just a step away. What's important for any investor to remember is that Tesla stock is largely about FSD right now. And bears shouldn't get too hung up on EV deliveries, by the way. I agree. It's, yeah, I'm not even going to get started on this, but it's so fucking funny. Th the mind-blowing shit Tesla's doing with FSD, and everyone's like, oh my god, gross automotive margins, Tesla delivery, it's oh. Other investors marveling at Tesla's rising PE ratio while year-over-year -year earnings decline should remember that billions of Tesla stock's market value is represented by FSD potential. Hey, the dude's right. 
Tesla bulls should probably realize that while impressive, few of us, if any, have the expertise needed to judge when the FST self-driving tipping point, wait, the full self-driving self-driving tipping point will be reached. This is absolutely true, by the way. No one knows when it's going to happen. That's irrelevant, though. What matters is, will it happen? And will Tesla be first? And do they have an unassailable lead? If the answers to those two questions are yes, well, that's all you really need to know. Tesla will try to explain when the tipping point will come when it hosts a RoboTaxi event on October 10th. Along with showcasing the technology, that event should include a physical RoboTaxi to look at while detailing RoboTaxi business model. I mean, the business model is going to be pretty simple, right? We already know what this is going to look like. Tesla operates their own fleet. Consumers can add their vehicles to the fleet. In that case, Tesla take a cut of all fares. In the case of the vehicles they produce and maintain themselves, they take all the cut because they're their vehicles. Charge per mile. I mean, hello. Use the Tesla app to hail one. <laughs> There's the business model. So quite an insightful article here. Good on Al for actually spending the time and the money to test this stuff out. Dude drives a thousand miles in a week. That is dedication. And when even folks in the media are reporting that they are extremely impressed with this software, with indications of rather human-like behavior, including being polite and letting somebody through during peak hour traffic. All signs point to autonomy being just around the corner. Want more content? Early access? A bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, it has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. And I haven't missed a daily video in more than three years. Must be a coincidence, right? Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. But don't take my word for it. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. By the way, viewer, that makes two of us. On to the next. Just got my AG1 in the mail. Legit feeling the effects after day three. This viewer has been taking AG1 for eight months and says, what an investment. Another. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pin comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. There's plenty more to come. This viewer, after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more. Yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more, don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect. But even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. If you're still skeptical, hey, I don't blame you. Everyone on the planet seems to be promoting AG1 now, but guess what? They weren't nearly three years ago when I had this to say privately to my Patreon audience before there was a relationship when I was asked about what I was doing for my health, energy, and so on. Just sharing my genuine, honest thoughts about a product I'd recently discovered that was at the time called Athletic Greens, now AG1. If I could only recommend one supplement to take, Athletic Greens, and I'm not getting paid to say this, Athletic Greens is a fucking game changer. I just, I cannot believe how effective this is. No longer having a lack of energy in the afternoons. It's fucking amazing. There's only one thing to recommend, seriously, try Athletic Greens, you won't go back. So obviously, just like Elon Musk is a liar, a fraud, a con man, a scammer, a fake engineer, and Tesla's going bankrupt, you shouldn't trust that guy from about three years ago who without any financial incentive, was promoting this product to his audience on Patreon when they were asking about health and what he's doing for supplements. Because obviously there was some other reason he recommended that, obviously. I'm not sure what it was, but don't trust that guy. And all the testimonials, like my mental game has improved with AG1. I feel better than ever. I'm so impressed I've bought it for both my parents. I feel more focused and have better digestion. Incredible difference. No more afternoon fatigue. It's relieved gut issues. These are all just obviously fake testimonials from fake people, right? Wrong. Just try it. Unless you hate yourself. If you hate yourself and you don't even want to risk possibly feeling better, this is not for you. But for everyone else, what's the worst that could happen? Try it for a month. See how you feel. It's a no-brainer. Just click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR. You'll get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 plus five travel packs. And 
you'll take the colossal risk that maybe you might have a similar experience to some of the people whose testimonials we've read in this video.